Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ, blessed. I'm Captain Zab. And to my left, I got Officer Hezekiah. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captain. Today, we're going to go over the power and punctuality, the importance of being on time, Israel, the importance of not being late, right? We're going to start with Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Yeah. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So part of us going into captivity, part of us not keeping the commandments of God is that what? These curses is going to come up on us. Let's go to verse 37. Come on. Verse 37, yeah. and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So he said we're going to become an astonishment. We're going to become a proverb. We're going to become these things. Read it one more time. And thou shalt become an astonishment. So we shall become. We were not always this. Come on. Let's read the definition of proverb. Let's see what we weren't always. Come on. The Google definition of proverb, uh -huh. a short, pithy saying in general use, uh -huh. stating a general truth or piece of advice. So stating a general truth. What is the truth about you, Israel? The truth about you is what? You always late. Negroes are always running behind schedule. We operate on what they call CP time. Black man, Hispanic man, black woman, Hispanic woman. You were not always late. This is who you have deteriorated into. You have become a irresponsible, a irreliable people. We have not always been that. Let's go to uh, Sirach chapter 18, verse 27. This is the book of Sirach chapter 18 and verse 27. Yeah. A wise man will fear in everything. In everything. A wise man, you wise brothers, you wise sisters, you're supposed to be fearful of everything. What? You're supposed to be mindful and pay attention to what's going on. Come on. And in the day of sinning, he will beware of offense. Uh -huh. But a fool. But this is what fools do. Come on. Will not observe time. A fool is always running behind schedule. A fool is running late. A fool is operating on CP time. But that's not who we were, Israel. We have became that. We were not that from the beginning. Let's go to Sirach chapter 43 and verse 6. This is the book of Sirach chapter 43 and verse 6. Yep. He made the moon also to serve in her season for uh -huh. a declaration of times. The Most High made the moon. Why? For a declaration of times. He made that thing for us to be on time. We run around today with watches on our arm, with giant flavor flavor clocks around our neck. And yet what? We still running late. The Most High put a timepiece in the sky for you, Israel, for you to stay on time, for you to be on time. But we have deteriorated into a people that can't be counted on. That are, that's late. Let's jump over. Come on. Let's jump over to Ecclesiastes in the Bible. Chapter 3 and verse 1. Come on. This is the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 3 and verse 1. Yeah. To everything there is a season. Uh -huh. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. And a time to every purpose. Everything is done. when it's, If it's done right, it's done in perfect timing. But we can't seem to get that right. We think running around with fringes on our clothes and, and, and knowing we Israel, that's it. Nah, something has to change, Israel. We have to be reliable as a people. We have to be on time. Let's jump over. Let's jump over to Ephesians chapter 4 and this, verse 13. Come on. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13. Yep. Till we all come in the unity of the faith uh -huh. and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And to the measure and stature of the fullness of Christ. So I ask you, Israel. Was Christ running around late? Was he always off schedule? Was he operating on CP time? Let's see what the Bible say. Come on, let's go to the book of John chapter 4. And we're going to start at verse 46. Let's see if Christ was running late. Christ wasn't on time. Let's see. This is the book of John chapter 4 and verse 46. Yep. So Jesus came again unto Cana of, Gal of Galilee uh -huh. where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. Okay. When he had heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. So this man was going to Christ, right? Trying to get his son healed. Let's go. Come on. For he was at the point of death. Uh -huh. Then said Jesus unto him, except ye see signs and wonders. So Christ said, except you see a sign. Let's see the sign. Come on. Ye will not believe. The sign is what allows you to believe. Come on. 
the nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down ere my son and ere my child die. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Uh -huh. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, uh -huh. and he went his way. He went on. Go ahead. And as and as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Okay. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. Then he asked, at what time was his son healed? Let's see what he said. And they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour. Now the they said yesterday at the seventh hour your son was healed. Okay. The fever left him. Uh huh. So the father knew that it was at the same hour. So he knew the same hour in which Christ said he was going to be healed. He was healed. Go ahead. In the which Jesus said unto him, thy son liveth, uh -huh. and himself believed. And then that man believed based on what? The time. Based on Christ's impeccable timing of him doing what he said he was going to do. In that time, he knew that, what, that Christ was responsible for his son being healed because it was done in perfect timing, on time, when he said it was going to be happening. Let's jump over to John chapter 2 and verse 18. So remember, remember also, remember Christ said what? He was going to die and rise again in three days, just like Jonah was in the whale's mouth for three days. Come on. This is the book of John, chapter 2 and verse 18. Yes, sir. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? So again, these people are looking for signs. Let's see. Come on. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days. And in what? In three days. In 72 hours. Go ahead. I will raise it up. Uh -huh. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, uh -huh. and wilt thou rear it up in three days? Mm -hmm. But he spake of the temple of his body. Mm. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered. His disciples remember what he said about what? Doing it on time. He said, in three days, I will rise again. They remembered. Christ said that. Dang, he did it. On, I went down there on the third day, and guess what? He was already gone. They remembered. Go ahead. They remembered that he had said this unto them, uh -huh. and they believed. The, and they what? And they believed you the scriptures. You got to understand, people will believe the scriptures if you what? Come out of that curse, Israel, of running late, of not being on time, of operating on CP time. Be on time, Israel. That's what Christ did. He said in 72 hours, I'm going to rise up. And he did it like he said he was going to do. Let's jump over to the book of Exodus. Let's see what happened over here. Let's look at the Passover. Exodus chapter 12. Uh -huh. Verse 6. Verse 6. Come on. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Talking about the lamb. Go ahead. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So again, that timing of when you kill that lamb was important to the Most High. He gave you the moon. Kill it when I tell you to kill it on time. Go ahead. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. So they also had to put the blood on the door post on the 14th day. Let's jump down. Where are we going to verse 11? Come on. Verse 11. Yep. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, with your shoes on your feet and with your staff in your hand. Uh -huh. And ye shall eat it in haste. Eat it how? You shall eat it in haste. Got to eat it in haste, in a hurry, quickly. Come on. It is the Lord's Passover. Yep. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night uh -huh. and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. He said on this night, on the 14th night. Okay, let's jump over to verse 29. Go ahead. Verse 29. Yep. And it came to pass that at midnight, the that Lord, at what? That at midnight. That at midnight. But say you waited till 1205 to put the blood on the door. You waited till 1215. You running behind schedule. You enjoying your lamb. You eating it nice and slow. Guess what? Let's see what happened. Come on. The Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. People getting put to death for running behind schedule. People getting put to death for running late. For not being on time, for operating on CP time. Yeah, here. Let's jump over to the book of Proverbs, chapter 22 and verse 29. So again, Israel, we see that Christ did what he said he was going to do on time, right? We see that the scriptures say he put the sign, he put the moon in the sky for a timepiece for you to be on time, Israel. We see that wise men are mindful of the time, according to Sirach chapter 18, verse 27. Come on. 
This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 22 and verse 29. Yep. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? Yep. He shall stand before kings. So if you diligent in your business, Israel, like we were, we were not that proverb. We were not that initially. Go ahead. He shall not stand before mean men. Uh huh. Jump over to uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Come on. This is the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. Yep. Be kindly affection one to another. Part with of being kindly and affection one to another is what? Being mindful of each other's time. Right. If you care for your brothers, you care for your sisters, you're going to be what? Mindful of their time and what they might have to do. You're not going to be running late, causing other people's time and schedule to be thrown off. Go ahead. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. Uh -huh. In honor, preferring one another. Uh -huh. Not slothful in business. Not being slothful, not running late. Go ahead. Fervent in spirit. That means you fervent in spirit. If you're not slothful in your business, you fervent in the spirit. Go ahead. Serving the Lord. You serve the Lord when you operate in timeliness. You serve the Lord when you operate on schedule, not running late. Let's jump over to Ecclesiastes in the Bible, chapter 10 and verse 15. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10 and verse 15. Yeah. The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of you them. You see that? When you're running behind schedule, you wear out everybody else because you're running late. Let's jump down to verse 18. Come on. Verse 18. Yep. By much slothfulness. When you're running late, you slothful. Go ahead. The building decayeth. That's how we have fallen apart as a people. That's how we have deteriorated as a people. By us being slothful. Us running behind schedule. Let's jump over to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 5. Come on. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4 and verse 5. Yes, sir. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, uh -huh. that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Bring it out. Keep therefore and do them. Keep therefore and do them. The things we're reading about us being on time and operating in the Lord's time, keep therefore and do them. Go ahead. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. This is your wisdom, Israel. This is who you are. This is who you have always been. You have been a wise and understanding people, a reliable and responsible people that show up on time, that show up in their appointed place and time. So let's put that CP stuff behind us. Let's put that CP time stuff behind us. Let's get back to the true nation we are of being responsible and reliable people and being on time, Israel. With that, we say shalom. Shalom. Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.